Hey, welcome to 8.6, Solving Exponential and Logarithmic Equations. So this is the last section of the chapter, and we're going to bring it all together in this section. So we're going to use all our different properties and a little bit of new stuff I'm going to learn today to solve exponential and log equations. So there's two types of exponential equations you're going to see, and those are on the front side here. And there's two, type of two types of log equations you're going to see, and those are on the back. So starting with the exponential equations, our goal now is to actually solve for x. So we're actually going to solve these now. Starting with example A, here's what I want to think of. Review a quick log property with you. If I have, if I have log base 2 of 2 to the x power, think in your mind, hopefully you all remember, what is that equal to? Okay, it's equal to x. Hopefully you said that. But <laughs> that's kind of the goal I'm doing right now. I'm going to try to use this property to solve these. So here's what I mean. If I have a base of 2, what I can do is I can actually take log base 2 of both sides. And what happens is this part, if you want to think of it this way, this part kind of all cancels and only the exponent is left over. So I've basically canceled out the base of 2 and now I've made it so it's just a regular x. But on the right side I've got log base 2 of 7. Not too bad using the change of base formula we just learned in section 8.5. So I can take log of 7 divided by log 2 and type that into your calculator. You end up with 2.81 approximately. We're going to round to two decimal places today and we're going to be finding the approximate solution in every situation. If I left it as log base 2 of 7, that would be considered the e exact solution. Now it says check for extraneous solutions. We're going to skip that for now in this video, and I might talk about that more in class, but for now we're going to skip that. Let's look at part B. So now I'm trying to get rid of a base of 4. So this time, because I'm trying to get rid of a base of 4, I'm going to take log base 4 of both sides. And so again, this whole part cancels and I want to type into my calculator log 15 divided by log 4. It does get harder than this in case you're wondering. <laughs> Go ahead and try typing that in. You should end up with approximately 1.95 for that one. Alright, so here's what we do when it gets more complicated. You want to try to get the thing that is the exponential statement by itself first before you log. I'm going to call that the base, quote base. Get the base by itself before logging. I'll call it logging. That's probably not official. I can't touch the 2x and the minus 3 at first because they're locked. They're locked there because they're in an exponent. So that I can't touch those until I've gotten rid of that by doing the log. So let me show you what I mean. So for this statement, first I'm going to try to subtract 4 from both sides. And I did not give you very much space to write for this problem, problem C in particular. So make sure you write small for this one. So after I subtract 4, I get 10 to the 2x minus 3 power equals 17. Once I've gotten rid of the 4, now I would consider the log, or not the log, but the exponential part to be all by itself. There's nothing else left except for the base and the exponent. Once you're at that stage, that's when you take your log of both sides. Now this time my base is a 10, so I want to take log base 10. And remember, you don't have to write the base 10 because a log base 10 is the normal common logarithm. And we're going to do approximate solutions today. So go ahead and type into your calculator log of 17, find out what it is, and we'll just use that decimal as we're going through the rest of the problem. So when I type that into my calculator, I get approximately 1.23. On the left side, all of this has canceled, and now I'm not just left with x, though. I'm left with that entire exponent, 2x minus 3. And this is where we now go ahead and keep solving. So add 3 to both sides. Technically, everything I'm doing from this point forward is an approximate solution. So I'll put a little squiggly 
and you end up with approximately 2.12 for your solution. Leave some space, we might come back and check that later during class. Why don't you pause the video and try part D, and then when you unpause it, we'll see how you did. If you have unpaused and you're checking your work, the question is, did you get negative 0.52? That's the correct answer for that one. Let's move on. So E is actually very similar to what we've just been doing, but F is a little different. So why don't we try F? And again, I'm going to try to get the thing that's the base by itself. The only thing is for this situation, I also want to get rid of the one half before I log both sides. So here I've got two things to do. I want to get rid of the one. So I have one half times two to the two x power equals five. And then I want to get rid of the one half. So multiply both sides by the reciprocal. It just cancels out this part. This part stays two to the two x power. 5 times 2 is 10. And now I have the base and the exponent all by itself, and I'm ready to take the log of both sides. This time it's a base of 2. So I'm going to log base 2 of both sides. And remember, in your calculator, if I'm trying to figure out what log base 2 of 10 is, I'm typing in log of the top divided by log of the bottom. So when I type that in, I ended up getting 3.32. On the left side, the two log base 2 and the 2 cancel each other. I'm left with 2x, and so divide by 2, and I get x is approximately 1.66. If you feel like you need to try one more, go ahead and pause the video and try f, and your final, or not f, but e, I mean, your final answer for e should be x is approximately negative point, let's do, I'll do three decimals this time, negative point zero seven nine. So go ahead and try E if you feel you need some extra practice. We just did the first type of exponential equation you're going to see today. So let's now we're going to do the second type. And the second type is happening when instead of just having an exponent on one side, I've got an exponent on both sides. So if you notice, everything I did previously, I only had a single exponent going on and everything else was just regular numbers. Now that I have an exponent on both sides, it makes things a little bit more complicated. I could potentially still take the log of both sides, but in, either, in order to make that work, in order to, to take a log of both sides, I need to have the same base. So our strategy for this is making each side have the same base so I can take the log of both sides and make everything cancel except for the powers. So let me show you what I mean. We're not going to make things too difficult for you, so don't overthink it, but when I get numbers like 4 and 8, they're going to be in the same family. So what I mean is it's going to be some there'll be numbers that are 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, or 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the 4th, 4 squared, 4 cubed, 4 to the 4th, you know, all numbers that have the same base but they're just a different exponent taken to them. And they're not going to go too high either, so it's going to usually be in this range. Not, not always, but usually these are the numbers that they're using. And here's what I mean. 4 is the same thing as 2 squared, and 8 is the same thing as 2 cubed. And the reason I'd want to do that, and the powers haven't changed, so I'll just rewrite those. The reason I want to do that is because I'm going to have the same base now. But just a second, before I do that, I have power to a power. We learned this in chapter 7. When you have power to a power, you can multiply those. So on the left side, it's actually 2 to the 6x power. On the right side, I can actually distribute that power of 3 to both of those. So I end up with 2 to the 3x plus 3 power. And notice I now have the same base. And now that's important because to get rid of that base of 2, I'm going to log base 2 of both sides. And this is only going to work because whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. <laughs> so it's only going to work if the bases are both the same. But since we made them the same on both sides, those are going to cancel. Those are going to cancel. So I now have 6x equals to 3x plus 3. Awesome, because now it's just a super easy equation. So just solve it like normal equation solving at this point. I've got 3x equals 3 x equals 1 for my final answer for part A. 
I'm going to give you a few seconds right now. Look at the number 2 and the number 32, and your goal at this time is to figure out what what family those are all in, I guess. Is it 2 to some power, 3 to some power, 4 to some power? And this is kind of a bad example, I guess, because this one's easy. <laughs> 2 is already written as a base of 2. So if you can just think, okay, 2 to what power gives me 32? And it's 2 to the 5th. So 32 is the same thing as 2 to the 5th. And this one is already nicely written for us. So I would just, I'm going to distribute my 5 quick. So I've got 2 to the 5x minus 5 exponent there. And on this side, 2 to the 4x exponent. And that whole left side I never had to do anything with. So now I would take log base 2 of both sides. And a shortcut is, as soon as you get it so they have that same base, the powers are just equal to each other. So I got 4x equals 5x minus 5 and then go through and solve it. I get negative x equals negative 5. Divide by negative 1. x equals 5 this time. Go ahead and look at c right now. See if you can figure out what my base is going to be. I'll give you a hint. The left side is going to be a 5 for the base. All right, anybody got it yet? I am thinking in my mind, 125 is the same thing as 5 cubed, so that's where my base is going to come from this time. I am going to now distribute this exponent, or multiply them together, I mean, which means I will distribute the 3. So I end up for this exponent, 3 times 2x is 6x, 3 times 3 is 9, so 5 to the 6x plus 9 power on the right. On the left, I've got 5 to the x minus 1. Last but not least, because it's a base 5, really what I'm doing is taking log base 5 of both sides. And I end up with x minus 1 equals 6x plus 9. Again, as soon as you get to this stage, easy equation solving. So I'm just going to quickly go through. I'm assuming people know how to do this part. But make sure you ask me in class if you struggle with the assol equation solving. Negative 1 minus 9 is negative 10 x equals negative 2 this time. As soon as you have that written down, go ahead and flip to the back and get ready to look up video number 2 for this section.